Why do horror stories attract our attention? What is it about fear that we find so fascinating? You see fear is a primal instinct, an age-old survival mechanism that's deeply ingrained in our psyche. It's the rush of adrenaline that courses through our veins when we sense danger, the heightened state of alertness that sharpens our senses, preparing us for fight or flight. But there's another side to fear, a darker, more complex aspect. It's the morbid curiosity that draws us to the unknown, the unexplained, the eerie and the macabre. It's the thrill of exploring the darker corners of our imagination, of confronting our deepest fears in the safety of our own minds. Horror stories provide a stage for this dance with fear. They allow us to experience the adrenaline, the suspense, the relief, all from the comfort of our own homes. So let us delve into the world of real horror stories, where fear takes on a whole new dimension. Our first tale takes us to a house where the supernatural became a terrifying reality. In a quaint little town nestled between the hills and the sea, stood an old Victorian house. This house, with its creaky wooden floors and dusty chandeliers, was home to the Hargrove family. They were a jovial bunch, always full of laughter and warmth. But their joy was short-lived when they realized that they were not the only occupants of the house. It started with the whispers, soft, barely audible murmurs that echoed in the dead of the night. Then came the footsteps, a rhythmic tap-tap-tap that seemed to emanate from nowhere and everywhere at once. The Hargroves, initially dismissive of these occurrences, grew increasingly uneasy as the incidents escalated. One fateful night, the patriarch, Mr. Hargrove, awoke to a freezing room. As he stepped out of his bed he was met with an icy gust of wind. The source, an open window, a window he distinctly remembered closing. He brushed it off as forgetfulness, but what happened next solidified his fears. His daughter, little Sarah, began talking to an imaginary friend. She would giggle and whisper in hushed tones, her eyes focused on an empty corner. When asked about her new friend, she simply replied, The lady in the old dress. A chill ran down Mr. Hargrove's spine. There was no lady in an old dress, at least, not one that the living could see. The Hargroves, desperate for answers, called upon a local medium. As the medium walked through the house, her face grew pale. She confirmed their worst fears, they were not alone. Their home was inhabited by a spectral presence, a woman from another time. Despite the fear, the Hargroves decided to coexist peacefully with their ethereal roommate. They treated her with respect, and in return, the eerie occurrences lessened. The whispers quieted and the footsteps faded. The house returned to its peaceful state but the spectral presence remained. The haunted house stands as a chilling reminder of the unseen world that may exist beside our own. Next we journey to a town that disappeared without a trace, leaving behind only questions. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine a town bustling with life, children playing in the streets, the smell of freshly baked bread wafting from the local bakery, a vibrant community where everyone knows everyone. Now imagine waking up one morning to find it all gone, every trace of life, every sound, every person, vanished. This is the chilling tale of the town of Ashley, Kansas. Home to over 800 residents in the late 19th century, this town was wiped off the map overnight. The story begins on a cold morning in November 1885, when a farmer living on the outskirts of Ashley noticed an eerie silence. The usual sounds of the town were absent, replaced by an unsettling quietness. With a sense of dread, he ventured into the town only to find it completely deserted. Houses stood empty, meals were left untouched on dining tables, livestock roamed freely, and the only sound was the whisper of the wind. It was as if the entire population had simply evaporated. The local authorities were immediately alerted, and they launched a widespread search operation. But no trace of the missing inhabitants was ever found. Even more perplexingly, all roads leading to Ashley seemed to disappear as well. It was as if the town itself had never existed. For over a century the mystery of Ashley, Kansas has confounded scholars and ignited the curiosity of horror enthusiasts. Theories abound, ranging from mass abduction to supernatural phenomena. Yet no concrete evidence has ever been unearthed to explain the town's sudden disappearance. The Ashley incident remains one of the most haunting unsolved mysteries in American history. It is a chilling reminder of the inexplicable forces that lurk in our world the unknown that can take hold without warning, and the questions left unanswered that fuel our fear of the dark. The vanished town remains a haunting enigma, a real horror story that defies explanation. Our final tale revolves around a cursed artifact, an object that brought doom to all who possessed it. This is the story of the infamous Hope Diamond, a gem that has been shrouded in mystery and misfortune for centuries. 
In the mid-17th century, a French merchant named Jean-Baptiste Tavernier acquired a large blue diamond from India. Legend has it Tavernier stole the diamond from a statue of a Hindu goddess, incurring a curse that would plague the diamond's owners for generations. Tavernier sold the diamond to King Louis XIV of France and soon after, he met a grisly end, mauled to death by a pack of wild dogs. The gem, now known as the French Blue, would remain in the French royal treasury until it was stolen during the French Revolution. It resurfaced 20 years later, recut and renamed the Hope Diamond. Each of its subsequent owners faced untimely deaths, financial ruin, or personal tragedy. The Hope Diamond was said to be cursed, bringing with it a cruel fate that no wealth could shield against. In the early 20th century, the diamond was purchased by an American socialite, Evelyn Walsh McLean. She wore the diamond regularly, dismissing the curse as superstition. However, she suffered a series of personal tragedies, including the death of her son, the divorce from her husband, and the loss of her family fortune. Despite the tragedies associated with the Hope Diamond, it continues to captivate us. Today, it resides in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., where it attracts millions of visitors each year. The Hope Diamond, with its chilling history and undeniable beauty, remains a symbol of the human fascination with the unknown and the unexplainable. The cursed artifact, a tangible embodiment of horror, continues to evoke fear and fascination. And so, our fascination with horror persists, drawn in by the thrill of the unknown, the allure of the unexplainable, and the tantalizing possibility that the stories we hear might just be true. As we've journeyed through these tales of horror, one question remains, why are we so captivated? Our fascination with fear is a complex tapestry woven from threads of curiosity, thrill, and the primal instinct for survival. Fear, as we touched upon in our first scene, is a deeply ingrained response that evolved to protect us from danger. Yet our modern safe lives rarely call for such intense reactions. So we seek out safe outlets like horror stories to experience these primal emotions. But what about real horror stories, those that can't be dismissed with the comforting thought of it's just a story? Well, they strike a different chord. They blur the line between the safety of fiction and the unpredictability of reality, creating a unique blend of fear and fascination. Remember the haunted house? The chills down your spine as you envisioned the spectral figures drifting through the halls? Or the vanished town, its streets echoing with the whispers of its lost inhabitants? And let's not forget the cursed artifact, its dark history seeping through every crack and crevice. These stories, rooted in reality, painted a world where the unimaginable morphed into the tangible. They presented a reality where the ordinary could twist into the extraordinary, where the safe could morph into the terrifying. That is the fear factor. It's the profound realization that the world isn't always as it seems, that our reality is far more complex, far more mysterious than we often give it credit for. It's the unsettling truth that sometimes the monsters aren't under our beds or in our closets, but are part of our history, our world, and perhaps even ourselves. So, while these tales may send shivers down our spines and make our hearts race, they also ignite our curiosity, our thirst for the unknown. They challenge our perceptions, push our boundaries, and make us question the world around us. Whether it's a haunted house, a vanished town, or a cursed artifact, real horror stories captivate us because they make the unimaginable a reality. In the end, horror stories, real or not, tap into our primal fears and fascinations. We've journeyed through the eerie corridors of a haunted house, felt the chill of a town swallowed by time, and held our breath in the face of a cursed artifact. Each story, steeped in fear and suspense, pulls us in, compels us to listen, to watch, to feel. These tales of terror remind us of our innate fear of the unknown. They are a mirror reflecting our deepest anxieties, our darkest curiosities. It's not the fear itself that draws us in, but rather the anticipation of it, the electrifying suspense that precedes the reveal. The allure of horror lies not just in the stories themselves but in how they make us feel. They remind us that we are alive, that we can feel, that we can fear. Perhaps it is the thrill of the unknown, the chill of the unnatural that keeps us coming back for more. After all, Fear, as we've seen, can be a powerful allure, 